Hey there, welcome to my channel. I am Irama and this is one on one with Ida Sin. So I haven't been here in a while, but I've been able to like put two and two together to bring you really good content. So um while you're on here, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell another creative that one on one with Ida Sin is officially back on the blog and we're not going anywhere. Stay tuned, subscribe, share, comment, like, all of that, all of that. I'll be with you short. Be happy every day, don't watch nobody and do your thing. If you're happy every day, forget what they say and go your way. You for happy every day, you for happy every day, you for happy every day. This is one of one with Justin. My name is Irama, and today I'm on with the one, the only, Kamido. Kamido, you're welcome. How are you? Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you feeling after the release of the Maria video? Um, feeling blessed. I'm feeling blessed. Thankful, and you know, just happy excited mm -hmm. you know <laughs> has the reception been so far for you? what were you expecting are you getting there yeah it's been exactly a day after we released um the video and then so far so good we're getting very good feedbacks and which is good for the brand you know um very very good feedbacks people love it so yeah i'm just hopeful for what is to come in the future you know yeah, absolutely. Now, um, we've heard you speak about contingency plan. You've seen you on media tours, in and out, having fun. What has, I mean, how has the corona impacted this? I know it was a plan B, but how has the whole corona situation impacted, you know, the tours and all of that? Well, I think that corona has kind of like put us on our toes, um, knowing very well what it, it, is, it is doing to our financial um, um status yeah. you know what i'm saying so it's like corona put us on our toes we need to double work we need to do a lot of work with regards to the media tour like you know we we need to do yeah. double that we will as to what we would do before mm -hmm. what we would have done before uh, in the absence of corona so i think that it put us on our toes to work hard corona just pretty much put us on our toes to work hard yes all right, so speaking about contingency plan, right? How much time did you have to put the whole thing together? Um, well, I wasn't on the clock per se. I just wanted to, you know, use the period to just put out something because I was meant to, you know, like I said, I, it's a plan B. So I wasn't on the clock. I wasn't really on the clock. But then um, the time that I took to put everything together was, was about like two weeks. Yeah, I think three weeks in all. Cause I think I took like two weeks to do the recording and then a week to just do the mastering and stuff. Yeah. And then we, yeah, we put it out. So every song on there was, was done within that period or you had maybe one or two lines somewhere and then you put that in there eventually. Every song was done. Um, every song was done within that period. Yes. Yeah. So maybe I think my Maria, yes, with Maria, I completed the song. I so I started, yeah, so this is what happened. So I started the song and I started, it was a sketch that I did. Oh. Actually, Maria was meant to be on um, the album. Yes, yes, oh, yes, wow. I remember. Yes, Maria was meant to be on the album. So I did a sketch before. I did a sketch and everything. And then when I went to the UK, um, I did the, oh. uh, the and I sent it to Neptunes because I had the chance to work with um, this uh, DJ... D, there was this DJ that I, I got the chance to work with in the studio. So while in the studio, it was with um, um, Oh Dada. There's a, there's, a, there's a producer called Dada in the UK. So while I, while I was in the studio with him, I did the finishing touches to Maria and I sent it to Nectunes, who was the producer, basically. So ne um, uh, Maria was actually meant to be on the album. Yes, I remember. How was, how was the UK tour? Because it was right after that you came down and then you got locked up a bit, right? Yeah. 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 How was that? How did that go? um it was awesome i loved the tour like i i always tell my agents over there that i want to come back like i really want to come back to the uk i love the uk no cap like i i loved every bit of it the hustle the struggling like the struggle every, everything about i loved it 100 there was there wasn't a thing i regretted the tour was awesome i met um awesome people um 
big shout outs to everybody that I met on the tour. Like I can't mention all the names, but it was really nice. I'm not gonna lie. It was really, really nice. The reception, like everyone contributed their beats and made it like a beautiful stay for me. I loved it. Yeah. I really did. Now definitely you do have like an Afro blend to your to your sound, but what do you classify it? <laughs> I usually call my sound the Afro pop R and B sound. Afro-pop you know, R&B. yes, that's basically because I mean I I know that most of the stuff that I do is Afro pop, right? Mm-hmm. And then, um, for the fact that I was inspired to start making music by Akon. Yeah. Big shout out to Akon. You know, he's an icon, and um, I was inspired like many years ago to start like making music or writing music or even singing because of him singing like you know um, proper singing not just like bathroom singing mm-hmm. <laughs> so i was inspired by him and so it kind of like gave me that um, r&b foundation if you see what i'm saying yeah i got that from him so then i fused the two together to create my sound which is the afro pop r&b then camido is synonymous to afro pop r&b yes would you ever try um going into like a different um genre like to try out a different genre sometime Yes, most definitely. Like, I think that one, one genre I would lo- love to try is the alternative, you know? Um, I would love that, like, those type of blues, I don't know how, how they're classified or whatever, but I, we usually call them alternative. Okay. I love, yeah, I love, I love that song. I have a friend who actually co-wrote one of the songs on um, a contingency plan called Mega EJ. He's an artist here in Ghana, and he, he does stuff like that that we usually call alternative. And I love, I love it so much. I'm not gonna cop, like I love it so, so much. It's like one of like the guys I listen to frequently. Yeah, yeah. So I definitely wanna go into that yeah, later. <laughs> you, you did mention that um, you, you catch your inspiration from Akon. Now, is there an artiste in the Nigerian industry that to some extent inspires you? Yes, um, I'm not gonna lie. Adekunle Gold has really, really Adekunle Gold has really impacted me. And then in Nigeria also, um, I'm gonna say Mr. Easy, David Whiskey. All of them have like they have all impacted me in a way because I listen to them and I learn one or two things. Mr. Easy is like simplicity. I learn a lot of simplicity from Mr. Easy, right? And also Adekunle Gold, he kind of like makes me feel good using my local language in my in my music. You know, so yeah, um, big shout outs to these like people, these icons who have impacted not only me, but a lot of like new, new musicians in Africa, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you know, with um, available TikTok, I get kids Daniel vibes off of you. Have you, have you ever thought of that? Like maybe the production, but I get, I get kids Daniel vibes off the song. Have you, have yeah, you, um, you? No, you know, the thing is sometimes every song, with the way I, I attack them, right? And um, um, like um, subconscious is there, you know? Once you listen to an artist, and I, once I listen to an artist and I love them, or I love their music, it's there, it's there. So you might, I might not even know or like be totally aware that I'm actually like catching a vibe from this artist. But when the song comes out, people now start to like realize it and then let me yeah. know. And I think it's not a lie. I think that it's not a lie. Um, there were a vibe in there that makes you feel a kiss Daniel in it. Uh, but I mean, it's still a blessing, you know, to, 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 to be able to, you know, make a beautiful piece, you know, like that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Do you see a sound um, kicking into the Nigerian industry sometime? Well, with me, I, I, I look at Africa as the country. I look at, I believe that if things really went well in the beginning, um, so many years ago we would have had africa as a country like united states of africa you know so i always kind of like have that mentality so africa has been my target not only ghana be my country you know what i'm saying so uh, i picture I, I i take inspirations from all these sides so yes i would definitely want to pierce into nigeria pierce into south africa pierce into eastern africa everywhere in africa i would definitely want to pierce into and then establish as an african icon that is the goal so yes i would i would definitely want to kick into nigeria and do a couple of things you know now you did mention production on cp earlier mentioned neptunes 
and I think there's Lake on that. Did you have a role to play in production, considering that you you previously produced um, for my lover? Yes. Um. So basically, on 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 the CP, I kind of like just shared um, some ideas, you know, as to maybe what, some tweakings here and there, what should be done and what shouldn't be done, blah blah blah, you know. And that is based on a relationship that I had with producers. So yes, I did contribute like some way somehow in that. Yeah. <laughs> But I can say for sure that it did come off as like a beautiful piece. Every song on there is like top notch. I think, I, I mean, I think it was good. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what we're expecting because nobody was expecting contingency plan, but it's, 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 it's top, it's top. I like it. Yeah. Now, Camido, let's so get much. to know you. <laughs> You're welcome. Let's get to know Camido before For My Lover. Well, um, before for my lover, I, 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 way, way back in 2008, I began. I, I, I mean, I discovered that I could sing. I mean, drawing inspirations from Acorn and all of that. I got into high school, started performing at entertainment programs, and then I met a guy who was saying we decided to become a group and we pursued music together as a group for about nine years. And fast forward 2017, December, we decided. And so I began a solo career from 2017, December, and then I started making covers. I started doing a lot of covers of like artists and songs that I loved and artists that I admired a lot. And then, I mean, it was just me in my room, stuck in my room, like always doing covers, recording, putting out on SoundCloud and stuff like that. And then I had my big break. Break and uh, that's when um, For My Lover dropped and then everything changed. So um, before For My Lover, I was just um, um, a young man who believed that he could sing and had a talent and then also had a passion and just was changed to the limelight and also, you know, becoming mainstream. Yes. So how did you, how did you feel when For My Lover broke through and then your name was out there again after the very first time, but like on bigger platforms, everybody was saying, hey, who's this? Hey, who's this? He's Ghanaian. Is he Nigerian? Hey, he's, he's speaking everywhere. What's going on? Like, you know, how did you feel? Like the reception that you... Well, um, it kind of like felt like a blessing to me. I'm not going to lie. Like I was always looking forward to that time when my music would like you know be mainstream i would be mainstream as an artist and be 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 played on mainstream radio in time where people would love it you know as a country or maybe a world loving my stuff so um, I felt blessed, number one. I really, really felt blessed. You know, I wasn't too excited because I felt like, well, is it just a one-time thing or am I going to stay? And, you know, so I wasn't too excited and I wasn't too comfortable. I was always, like, on my toes working and, you know, making sure that, that like, the, that what we got had to stick and we had to get more, you know. So that was just the feeling. <laughs> yeah. Well, comparing that feeling to the feeling you're getting off of contingency plan, is that any better? Do you feel more confident in things working for you now? Like I already said, the aim is to be established as an African artist. And I don't think that like, a place like Kenya, you know, they don't even know me. So <laughs> the aim is to keep working, keep working, keep working until the whole of Ghana knows me um, like this. If you say Camido, they can just tell you who he is and what I've been through and my music or my catalog, they can, you know, mention, then we move on to the next. So it never stops, you know? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the feeling after um, um, For My Lover came, it was exciting, it was, it was a blessing. Sounds beautiful. Now, Camido, um, considering that you've been in this for a really long time, we've seen you be on songs with um, Dark Hope, seen you with Kelvin Boy. How supportive have these artists been in your come up? Because I'm pretty sure it's very difficult getting through to them in the start until you hit some some level and then everybody is then ready to, you know, take you up. Okay, so, um, well, I'm just going to talk about my experience, right? I know that many a times artists that are into mainstream or into the limelight, they uh, they get, like, pretty busy a lot of times, you know, so um, sometimes you have to pardon them when they don't get back to you and stuff like that. But for my experience, like, I met Daco Vibes through all my stelling of r 2 bs and it has been awesome, like, with regards to him dropping a verse, representing in a video, 
and you know tweeting like a couple times you know here and there posting and so i mean uh well for me it has been a blessing like artists that i've met and worked with they all kind of like gave me um if not their a then maybe their b game you know so it's been awesome for me because where i came from we never really had people like come on board and just to support us like that so yeah, yeah. with Darko Vibes it was awesome with Kelvin Boy it was awesome with um, uh, Manifest it was awesome with um, Medical it was awesome everybody that I met and worked with like it's been an amazing time with them all of them kind of like gave me you know their A or B game so yeah it's good What's good? So well, uh, yeah. What should we What should we be expecting? I mean, I know that you've got a little time now that you're giving us contingency plan, but what should we look forward to um, with regards to the album? Well, um, contingency plan is still on the roll. Um, we just put out like one video, and I, I think we still have two more to put out. So, by the grace of God, we're gonna put out like two extra more videos. But I mean, right now it's Maria. We're just looking to promote Maria some more, and if possible will do a remix or you know do something so there's still work to be done you know um it keeps going like that there's there's no time to waste there's no time to sleep or you know <laughs> we just keep working so just be on the lookout for camido here and there like every nooks and cranny we're there we're working <laughs> grind on stuff yeah. i mean i think as an artist i see you going for the sound the energy the vibe it's 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 all positivity for me so i do i do see things going way higher than they are or probably maybe higher than we probably would be looking at but i think there's a lot of positivity out there for you coming to i really do yeah so um yeah until then i think everybody everybody should hop on listen to contingency plan watch the maria video and it's a wrap so I was on with Camido and we spoke on the contingency plan, his recently released EP. If you haven't checked it out, you should go check it out because it's got nothing but good tunes on there. Um, thank you for staying tuned up until this point. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, you know, do all of that. I'll be with you shortly in the next episode. I hope you like this one. Bye.